Welcome everyone to my sexy router video. I'm doing my best to make routers sexy. I will start this video off with a confession. As of yesterday, I still only had 802.11n Wi-Fi here in my home. It may come as a shock to many of you who believe that I am always at the forefront of technology, but I can explain why with two simple words. Gigabit Ethernet. I have Cat6 cable like this running up through my attic. I actually documented this on an epic episode of Pimp My Attic a few months back, so check that out if you're interested. It means that all my desktop PCs here in the garage back in the uh, computer room are hardwired, but that's not to say that I don't use Wi-Fi. Here in my house, phones, laptops, uh, sometimes even cameras hit up the 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz bands like 16-year-old groupies at a One Direction concert. But the 802.11n connection provided by my trusty Asus RT-N56U router that I've had for a few years years now has always been adequate. And yes, I updated the firmware. Why settle for adequate though when you can get better than adequate? I decided it was time to try 802.11ac. Excellent. So my journey to 802.11ac Wi-Fi began when I received this Tenda AC15 router. Based on the box, you might think it's the Tenda AC1900 router, but no, it's the AC15. The 1900 refers to the 600 megabits per second of bandwidth on the 2.4 gigahertz band and 1300 available on the 5 gigahertz band. Why this router though? It's not necessarily the fastest in its class and the reviews for it, to be honest, are actually kind of mediocre, but it's pretty damn cheap. It's about 84 bucks right now compared to 120 to 200 for similar models from Netgear, Asus, D-Link, and Linksys. And it's got a wired gigabit ethernet hub, so my wired LAN should stay intact and up to speed. Beyond that, if it can deliver consistent 802.11ac speeds, which it should be able to do if it adheres to the spec, I will be happy. Other than dual band 802.11ac support, the AC15 also sports a bubbly glossy black plastic finish, which I think is pretty terrible to be honest. Three antenna for MIMO support, a bank of lights up here on the front for status and connectivity indications, a Wi-Fi protected setup button, and a dedicated Wi-Fi on off button up here on top, which I do like to have. And on the back there's a power button and a jack, a USB 3.0 plug that can be used for network attached storage or a networked printer, and four wired RJ45 gigabit ethernet jacks one for your WAN connection, and three for your LAN connection. Only three LAN ports? Really, Tenda? Four is the standard for a gigabit switch, I will have you know. I am disappointed. So in my opinion, a router should pretty much be invisible. Beyond setting it up, naming the SSID something funny like NSA Security Drone, The Promised LAN, or Lord of the Pings. For more of these hilarious suggestions, please visit the Reddit thread linked in the description. And of course, using WPA2 encryption at the very least with a very strong password, I don't want to know it's there, or even think about it. I just want it to work. I'm just gonna be doing the basic setup with AC15. Unfortunately, that wasn't too difficult. Once it's plugged in, just access any connected PC's web browser and you should be auto-navigated to tendawifi.com, which lets, lets you access the control panel. The AC15 has a range of features like cloud access, packet prioritization, FTP, and VPN support, but I've never used those features on any router and I don't really plan to now. All I want to know about is speed, and I can't really do some tests on that without some baseline tests on my existing ASUS router. My basic usage tests, since I've already ran them, uh, didn't really show any marked difference between these two routers. Uh, web browsing, gaming, and watching streaming 1080 video all worked just fine, apart from out here in the garage where range becomes limited, particularly on this one. So to speed things up, let's just move straight to the real deal test, which is throughput, or data transfer speed between locally connected devices, to put too fine a point on it. I've concocted a basic real world mixed file transfer test of about two gigabytes, and I'll be seeing how long it takes to transfer from a wirelessly connected 802.11ac laptop to a wired system on the LAN. Also, I'm transferring to and from SSDs, so the only limiting factor here should be the router. Aren't you guys lucky? We get to skip straight to the test results. So uh, here you can see on the left, I've got the living room, the bedroom, and the garage being the three locations that I tested in. The living room being about 10 to 15 feet from the router with no walls in between. The bedroom being a little bit further, 20 to 25 feet with about two walls in the way. And the garage is further, 30 to 45 feet away. And there's multiple things in the wall. I kind of summed it up to being about two walls. Uh, I tested the Asus as well as the Tenda at five gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz. So I tested both bands. Uh, I was doing that 2 gig transfer with mixed file types and then uh, I ran three tests each time and at the top you can see the uh, average uh, time as well as calculated out to megabytes per second. So um, as you can see the living room uh, tests went uh, pretty well for the ASUS of course. Um, although you do notice a little bit of a performance boost of 5 gigahertz. Note this uh, asterisk title here, that's because the ASUS RT-N56U, and part of the reason I'm 
intending to get rid of it uh, is that it's been freezing up here and there. It was really random. I actually hadn't done it for maybe a month or two, but during the course of the testing, I was able to get it to do it. So that's why I threw that result out. When it wasn't locking up, because it was very obvious when it was, uh, it still got this much. So for the rest of the tests, I ran through everything. Uh, although bear in mind, once I got here to the garage for the Asus router, the signal was a little bit too weak on five gigahertz to pick up anything. And then on 2.4 gigahertz, I was able to get, connect to the network, but it was really unstable, it kept dropping out. At most, it gave a 12 to 14 minute ETA. Um, now looking here, you'll notice that the, the Tenda's results, especially if you're looking at only five gigahertz, are, are pretty much faster across the board compared to the, the Asus five gigahertz. In fact, almost doubling of speed from uh, 15 to about 28 or 29 megabytes per second here in the living room. Uh, it's definitely slowed down a lot when I put more obstructions in between down to 12.1 megabytes per second and 11.1 megabytes per second. Um, the 2.4 gigahertz results though, I was actually pretty disappointed with. You'll note here compared to the, the, the living room and bedroom tests, uh, the speeds were actually slower on the Tenda for 2.4 gigahertz than the Asus. Trade-off there being that I was able to connect out here in the garage, so I do have results for the Tenda out here, whereas the uh, Asus will just, I wasn't even able to run the test. So there you go, uh, definitely faster speeds with the Tenda, but slower speeds on 2.4 gigahertz. Now, if you don't do a lot of file transferring around your home network, then you might think that 802.11ac isn't really necessary. And that could be true, but also consider this. A faster router also helps when you have multiple devices connected to it. This is because a router does not talk to multiple devices at the same time. It switches off between them one at a time. This means that if each transmission completes more quickly, it will speed up the queue for all the other connected devices. Something to think about. So final thoughts on the Tenda AC15 uh, would be, I like that it's significantly faster on five gigahertz and it definitely has better range than my old router. Setup was pretty simple and I have a new respect for those Wi-Fi transfer speeds, especially when I'm at close range. I don't like that it only has three gigabit ethernet ports instead of four. Uh, it's limited in that it must be positioned upright on a stand and there is no wall mount included. Also, if I'm being picky, the design is just Pretty hideous. Uh, my wife said that it looks like a cheap purse, if, if anyone's feeling that. My biggest concern, of course, was the limited 2.4 gigahertz performance. And this is a huge example of how even industry standard specifications don't always match up with expected performance. The trade-off is the increased range, which does seem to be giving me much more stable connections out here in the garage. Overall, I'm happy with switching over to 802.11ac with enhanced range again being the most significant factor and that speed boost being a bit of icing on the cake. What are you guys using for wireless at home though? Have you jumped up to 802.11ac? Are you still using something older? Uh, personally, I'm gonna stick with the 10 to ac 15 for now since it's getting the job done and it's not locking up like my old router was. But in the future, I'm probably gonna be looking at maybe building a PFSense router of my own hardware because I'm do that kind of thing. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button down there. Also, you can use my Amazon link, which is in the description for US and UK. If you're shopping for holiday gifts or whatever else, uh, you can also feel free to visit my store at store.paulshardware.net where you can support me by picking up a shirt or a mug or a pint glass, none of which I have examples of right here, but trust me, they're nice. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more tech videos. This will probably be my last router video for the while, but uh, as always, thanks for watching.